Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you are here today because we know that you are going to encounter the presence of God in this time. We'd love to know that you're here, so if you would, take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here, let us know how we can be in touch, and let us know, most importantly, how we can be in prayer for you. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath, and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in our congregational prayer, which you will see on the screen. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you know us fully. You see our hearts and know our desires, and we can't keep any secrets from you. In this time of worship, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts through the breath of your Holy Spirit so that we can perfectly love you and fully praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name. Not to preach our creeds or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nation, finding neighbors everywhere. We are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is life. In an humble, listening spirit, we would live to God's delight. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed, so may we be signs of oneness in earth's people's many hue. As a rainbow lights the heavens when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's new and glorious dawn. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer. Loving Father, on this weekend when we rest from our usual labors, we pray for all who shoulder the task of human labor in the marketplace, in factories and in offices, in schools and in hospitals, in the fields, on the water, and at the family home. We thank you, Lord, for the gift and opportunity of work. May our efforts always be pure of heart for the good of others and for the glory of your name. We lift up to you all who long for a better job and those who work to defend the rights and needs of workers everywhere. May those among us who are now retired remember the valuable contribution we continue to make to our church and to our world through our prayers and our deeds of charity. And may those who are students get the education they need to realize their dreams and callings for the future. We especially pray for those students whose classes were interrupted by violence on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill this week. 
and for the life of Professor Jan, who was needlessly killed. May our students be able to learn in peace and security, and our teachers be able to teach without fear for themselves or for the people in their classrooms. Classes and businesses even closer to home were disrupted this week by Hurricane Adalia. We thank you that we were spared the brunt of the storm, but we mourn with our neighbors to the south who lost property, businesses, and even the lives of loved ones. Help us to be generous in reaching out to our neighbors in need, giving to them the kind of aid that we've received or wish we had received in our past. Heavenly Father, you also know the names of those people and events who did not make the news. We ask that you will give a measure of your healing mercy and grace to the people we name before you now. Great God of all creation, may our working and our resting give you praise this day as we ultimately work to be the body of Christ in this world, building up your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven under the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to give you the opportunity to uh, give back to the Lord through your tithes and offerings. And you can do so by contributing to our church here at Wrightsville UMC by going to our website, wrightsvilleumc.org. You can go to our app, or you can use the mail and uh, simply write a check and, uh, and give that to the ministries here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. kids. I'm Pastor Julia. So you went back to school this week, probably. How's it going? How's your new grade? Do you like your teachers and the people you go to school with? Well, did you know that if you were alive a hundred years ago or so, you might not have gone to school at all? Okay, I know that maybe sounds fun, but the reason you wouldn't have gone to school is because you would have had to work. And I mean really, really awful stuff, like working in a smelly, gross factory, working all day long with hardly any breaks to sit down or drink water or have a snack. That would be awful. Well, the reason why Thankfully, you get to learn and play and enjoy being a kid now is because there were people who saw what was happening and said, hey, this isn't right. Especially, there were people who were Methodists. That's the kind of church that you go to. This is Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Well, there were Methodists who said, you know, what's happening right now with kids that doesn't look like what God wants, what we see in the Bible. And so what did they do when they saw this, that the world is one way, but God's heart is something else? They said, we're gonna work to change it. So I actually have here something really cool. This is a page from a newspaper in the year 1912. And I know that's really tiny print, but you can see here's a headline that says Methodists to war against child labor. How cool is it that a hundred years ago, people who don't know you but are old enough to be your great-great-grandparents, maybe even your great-great-great-grandparents, they cared so much about you and about God that they fought so that you could have a better life. They looked at what the world was like 
and they looked at what God wants for the world and they saw they didn't match. So they set about working to make those two things closer to each other. You know, it makes me wonder. I wonder what you'll do. I wonder what you'll see when you look around the world. What things maybe you'll see that aren't the way that God wants them to be. And I wonder what you'll do. And I hope you know that the church is always here to help you when you want to make change happen. But until it's time for that, I hope that you enjoy being a kid, enjoy learning and enjoy playing throughout the day, and know that your church family helped to make that possible for you. Let's say a prayer. Holy and loving God, we thank you for our parents in the church and our grandparents and our great-great-grandparents and our great-great-great-grandparents. Help us to be like them and to help make the world more like you want it to be. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Eun Su Gang, one of the associate pastors here, Ricefield United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful for this privilege of delivering God's word. Our scripture reading for today comes from Paul's letter to Christians in Philippi. In this letter, Paul emphasized the real joy of the Christian's life. So let us embrace this message in our heart. Now, hear the word of God from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me and always be on me so that your word might be heard by your people this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have you ever heard about the word YOLO? which stands for you only live once. This phrase has become a culture phenomenon, frequently appearing across social media platforms. YOLO encourages people to engage in exciting and sometimes silly or even risky activities under the premise that life is short. It embodies a carefree, seize-the-day mentality, often used to highlight enjoyable experiences or to rationalize irresponsible actions to maximize one's joy. You might see hashtag like YOLO accompanying posts such as drinking an entire bottle of hot sauce or just bought my sixth new car 
This YOLO philosophy advocates for soaking up every possible experience before it's too late, regardless of potential consequences. It promised the idea that we should live each day as if it is our last day and seizing opportunities as they come. While YOLO can serve as a reminder to appreciate and make the most of every moment, it can also lead people down a path of self-destructive and selfish behavior. In times of hardship or conflict, this mindset can escalate to dangerous extremes, even to the point where people may think, I will harm, or even I will kill you and myself as well. So I pose this question to you today. How do you understand the you only live once philosophy? And what kind of joy do you seek in your life? Today, I want to explore a different interpretation of living once and a distinct kind of joy that is not aligned with YOLO culture. So today's scripture reading from Philippians is often referred to as Paul's letter of joy. Remarkably, the Greek words for joy and rejoice appear 14 times throughout this letter. But Paul's understanding of joy is significantly different from YOLO mindset. He was not advocating for material accumulation or reckless behavior. In fact, he was writing this letter from a prison cell, a consequence of spreading the gospel. If I were in Paul's shoes, I might have questions. Is this fair guide? I have sacrificed my reputation honor, relationships, and social standing for the sake of your message. And now, in prison? Are you kidding me? Is this the reward for dedicating my one life to you? Despite his circumstances, Paul exhorts us to rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Surprisingly, he even advises let your gentleness be known to everyone from within the confines of his prison. How could someone in such a situation inspire a congregation to rejoice? Paul's perspective offers us a profound understanding of what true joy means. The cornerstone of Paul's joy lies in his relationship with Christ. He was joyful because he was confident that no matter what would happen, Christ was with Paul. This joy is not dependent on external circumstances, but springs from an inner strength rooted in a deep relationship with Christ. In verse 5, Paul says, the Lord is near. This conviction empowers him to encourage us to rejoice. It's astonishing that such a statement comes from a man in prison. Paul was not only awaiting Christ's return, but also experiencing the immediate presence of God, even in his current hardship. He understood that his earthly life was not the final chapter. It was part of a grander narrative that transcends human limitations and extends into eternity. Paul advises us to pray about everything, big or small, and to bring it before a loving God. We can't escape anxiety through our own effort. If we try, it only festers and grows. But Christ understands our worries, and Christ meets us in our despair. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard our minds and our heart. Without this anchor, our lives would be lost and easily swayed even by the smallest of disturbances. How much more vulnerable would we be without this joy and without this hope? Last week was a difficult one. The excitement of a new school year was shattered by a tragic shooting. The campus, which should have been a haven for dreams and friendships, turned into a place of grief and fear. It's heartbreaking to think about the parents anxiously awaiting messages from their children, hoping they were safe. I have pondered how such a tragedy could occur. Could the suspect have acted differently if he understood that his life was part of a larger story? Four years ago, I found myself in a new country and enrolled at Duke Divinity School. I had left behind everything familiar, my family, my friends, my community, to come to the United States. But just one semester in, the pandemic hit. And suddenly, I was confined to a small room alone, attending classes through my laptop screen. The excitement and purpose that had initially filled me were replaced by isolation and questioning about myself. Who am I and what am I doing here? But it was during this low point that my church community at Cedar Grove stepped in, along with friends who became my family. They remind me that even when life feels like a series of closed doors, God is still writing my story. My earthly struggles were not the end, but they were merely a chapter in a much larger narrative that God could write for me and for all of us. The joy and peace the world could not give came to me in a way that I had never expected before. As a person who was once an international student, feeling isolated and confined, I can't help but wonder if that young man had understood his life was part of a bigger story, might he have made a different choice? What if he had a community like Cedar Grove as I did. When we truly grasp that our lives are connected into a greater narrative, the impulse to harm others diminishes. it. Hurting someone else is not just an act of violence against them, it's a wound we inflict upon on our souls. Life is not a zero-sum game where one person's gain is another's loss. Through the gospel, we understand that life is a collective journey towards healing, redemption, and eternal salvation. Today, as we reflect on Paul's letter and the challenges we face in our own lives, let us remember that True joy is not found in the fleeting moment championed by the Yola culture. It's not about seizing the day in a way that disregards the well-being of others. True joy is found in seizing the eternal, in grasping the everlasting love and presence of Christ in our lives. Paul, even from his prison, could say, Rejoice in the Lord always, rejoice. Because his joy was rooted not in his circumstances, but in his relationship with Christ. He understood that the presence of Christ within us is the wellspring of everlasting joy. It's a joy 
that doesn't waver in the face of life's trials and tribulations is a joy that provides us with the strength to be gentle, even when we could be harsh to be loving, even when we could be hateful to be hopeful, even when circumstances seem bleak. So beloved Riceville, as we go forth this week, let us strive to live not just for the moment, but for the eternal. Let us find our joy in Christ who loves us, who is always near and whose story for us extends far beyond the here and now. Let us remember that our earthly lives are not the final chapter, but a part of a grander narrative that God is still writing. As Paul reminded his people in Philippi, at the end of this letter. In the name of Christ, may the joy of Christ fill your heart and guide your actions. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of your word, for the teachings of Paul, and for the everlasting joy that comes from you through Christ Jesus. We pray that as we leave this century today, the joy of Christ will fill our hearts, guide our thoughts, inspire our actions, and remind us you are near and that our story is part of your grander narrative. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered wherever we may be today and on our gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup of salvation for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite you to partake now. Beloved Riceville, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. May the peace that surpasses all understanding guide your hearts and minds in Christ. May our God of love and peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with you and stay with you this day and forevermore. Amen.